Welcome back to Spectrum. Today we're going to take a behind the scenes look at the process of creating a thin section. We'll start with an overview of our lab and then we'll head out onto the floor and follow a section through the process step by step. So most of our equipment um, has been built by machinists and fabricators to our specifications because very little machinery that's commercially available um, was suitable for what we really wanted. And the machines have gone through a number of different versions as we've made improvements um, with research and development, finding better ways, made ways to improve the machines. A, a lot of people in manufacturing will be well aware of the relationship between materials and machines and technicians. And you could never get robots to make thin sections. We've thought about it like everybody would think about automating, and there's just incredibly little that you could automate here. And so the real good relationship is a good machine in the hands of a skilled technician, and that's the combination that makes us able, makes a technician able to produce 5,000 thin sections in a year. When a new order arrives at Spectrum, submittal paperwork is reviewed and the order information is logged into our database. Special preparations, turnaround times, and customer contact information are noted. Each sample is then laid out in a numbered bin, corresponding rock labels are printed, and the order is assigned to a skilled technician. Then it's off to the lab. First stop, trim saw. Many samples need to be trimmed to fit into our resin embedding molds, which are a little smaller than a standard petrographic slide. For most samples, a trusty old tile saw with a diamond blade works just fine, and is much safer than a true rock saw. This round-edged diamond blade won't actually cut soft materials, so we can keep our fingers out of danger. Samples are carefully trimmed to maintain the target section area, as well as any important orientations, such as strike and dip, or directions, like stratigraphic up. As each sample is cut to roughly 21 by 40 millimeters, it is placed into a corresponding mold labeled with its sample ID. When the entire order has been trimmed to size, samples are placed in a dehydrator to remove all moisture before the next step. After drying completely, samples are ready to be stabilized by embedding in polymer resin. At Spectrum, we embed all samples with a rim of quartz sand. These quartz grains will provide a valuable reference for determining the thickness of the slide later in the process. After the quartz rim is in place, a two-part epoxy is prepared and dripped into each mold. The samples are then placed under vacuum, which pulls the resin into voids in the sample and eliminates any excess air bubbles. The next morning, molds are removed and each label is transferred to the cured sample block. We refer to these blocks as billets, which are now ready for surfacing. The billet comes out of embedding with some pretty sharp edges, so we dole those down in order to handle them comfortably. Essentially, surfacing involves preparing the thin section target face on increasingly refined laps and wills. First, the sample is exposed on a coarse grit diamond lap. Then the exposed face is flattened and refined on a medium grit diamond lap. At this point, most samples benefit from a stabilization step called surface impregnation. When the billets are again dry, a layer of resin is applied to their exposed surfaces. This resin fills any voids or cracks, penetrates water sensitive materials, and locks out any possible contaminants. After another overnight curing period, surface preparation continues. Surplus resin is removed by a fine diamond cloth. Then, the final target surface is repaired on the mud wheel. At this station, an 18 micron free abrasive removes any defects remaining from prior servicing steps and creates a smooth matte surface that will then be mounted to the glass. We used to hand engrave sample identifiers on every slide using a dental tool. We actually still use this method for transferring orientation and direction markings to the glass. 
However, using a laser engraver for printing sample IDs has streamlined the process and improved legibility. A file is sent from our database, blank slides are lined up, and a moment later the entire order is engraved and ready to mount. During mounting, the glass slide is attached to the prepared billet. A few drops of adhesive are applied to the prepared surface and then the glass slide is put into place. Trapped air bubbles are encouraged to disperse by surface tension and light pressure. Then, the sandwich is placed under ultraviolet light to cure the adhesive. A few moments later, the glass is securely attached to the sample. All steps after mounting are focused on progressively thinning the slide towards a final thickness of 30 microns. The cutoff step detaches extra sample from the future thin section. Our cutoff saws are homegrown designs built by Spectrum's co-founders. Inside the saw basin, the slide is attached by vacuum to a horizontal chuck arm. The lid is closed to contain the splatter of rock and cooling liquid. Then, an external weight is freed and the chuck arm passes the sample through the blade by force of gravity. The cutoff billet is saved and can be resurfaced and made into additional thin sections if necessary. The section is now approximately 500 microns thick. Next, the slide is placed on the chuck of the Hillquist grinder. The design of this machine keeps the slide perfectly parallel to a vertical grinding wheel. Watching the thickness gauge, the technician incrementally guides the machine down to a thickness of around 100 microns. While the Hillquist has a gauge that measures apparent thickness, the final grinding step requires the precise skill of the technician. The design of this station is similar to the surfacing mud wheel. A mixture of 18 micron grit and anhydrous liquid is applied to a grooved lap. Using varying pressure and fine-tuned tactile sensitivity, the technician carefully grinds the slide while repeatedly checking thickness in a cross-polarized viewer. This is where the quartz rim created in embedding comes in handy. As with most minerals, quartz grains display different interference colors at different thicknesses. Under cross-polarized light, these colors shift in a predictable way as the slide is thinned. A slide that will be polished is ground to 40 microns, where quartz is lemon yellow. Standard final thickness is 30 microns, where quartz appears bright white. The most important finishing distinction is whether a slide is unpolished or polished. A traditional petrographic section is our most basic preparation. Left unpolished, this type of section is suitable for transmitted light analysis using an optical microscope. Mineral stains can be applied to the surface, and cover glassing protects the sample and improves optical clarity. Polished thin sections are the most requested preparation and are the platform for most modern microanalysis. After final grinding and cleaning, the slide is polished using 0.5 micron diamond abrasive. After the slide is finished, it is cleaned one last time and checked for quality. Then, the sections, billets, and extra sample materials are packaged and shipped off to customers. Many of the samples we receive undergo this exact treatment. Although there can be variations based on individual sample characteristics and special analysis requirements, the essential elements of preparation remain the same. So thanks for joining us back in Spectrum's lab as we turn samples like this into thin sections like this.